Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Hirsch. I'm the Director of Workforce Development and Transitional Employment at St. Anthony Foundation. And we're delighted to be here uh, to share some information about our Transitional Employment and Workforce Development Program. I'm joined by my colleague, Joe Klosik, who is an Employment Specialist at St. Anthony's. And Joe and I will be doing this presentation uh, together. So just to give you a little bit of information about uh, our transitional employment program, um, we've been hiring um, guests um, that use St. Anthony services for many years. And what we've decided to do in the last six months is to create a little bit more structure around employment opportunities and to welcome individuals uh, into uh, this transitional employment program, which is six to eight months, sometimes a little bit longer. Um, our, our transitional jobs are temporary jobs, and the purpose is to uh, prepare people to re-enter the workforce and to also um, earn a livable wage while also receiving ongoing training, and that is paid training. So we provide job readiness um, uh, training for individuals who are seeking employment. Um, we help them with job search and job placement and also job retention. And as I said, we also provide on the job uh, paid training. So how does it work? Um, so the, the first step in uh, getting involved with our transitional employment program is to fill out a, a transitional employment interest form on our website. And we'll give you that web address later on in the presentation. Uh, it's a very simple form. It takes about five minutes to fill out and then you press the submit button and that goes right into our inbox. Once we receive your interest form, we will uh, call you and have a brief phone interview. And depending on uh, your skills and, and your experience, we might refer you into pre-employment training or if you're ready to apply for a job at St. Anthony's, we will uh, invite you to do that. And we have transitional jobs on our job board. Um, once you're hired as a transitional employee, you will receive ongoing paid training, as I mentioned before. And over the course of the transitional employment experience, you'll be uh, preparing for a long-term full-time position, either at St. Anthony's or be placed with one of our external partners. Um, we would provide opportunities for interviews um, with folks in the community. So here's a list of some of the jobs that are available through our transitional employment program. Um, we are always hiring kitchen assistants to work in our dining room. Um, our dining room on at 121 Golden Gate Avenue, we serve about 1600 meals a day and we uh, need a lot of assistance in the kitchen uh, doing uh, various tasks. We also have a community safety services department, which are folks that help uh, work on the 100 block at Golden Gate Avenue and, um, and work with our guests and keep the block safe and support people, give, provide referrals to different services um, that we offer at St. Anthony's. Um, we also have a one-year rehab recovery center uh, called Father Alfred Center. It's at 291 10th Street. And we also hire kitchen assistants there as well as service associates. We have a hygiene hub where we offer uh, free showers and laundry services. And we hire service associates there. There's also transitional employment there as well as guest services in our dining area and, and other parts of the organization. And we also have a free clothing program and we hire folks uh, there as well. So that's an example of some of the jobs that we offer at St. Anthony's. So I mentioned that we offer a job readiness curriculum and Joe's gonna give you a little bit more information about this in a minute. Um, it's a total of 45 hours. It's a three week program that um, happens in the afternoons um, during uh, each, each month we offer this. We, uh, we cover emotional intelligence and inter interpersonal communication. These are all skills that are necessary to get a job and keep a job. We also provide financial and digital literacy, job readiness, um, what it means to be professional on the job, 
um, what you can expect when you get a job, how to retain a job. We also help people with resume and cover letter writing, which I know also is done at the library and we do that as well. Um, we help people get familiar with how to uh, search online for jobs. And we also offer mock interview opportunities so that you can prepare for an interview um, when you have that opportunity and feel comfortable in that setting. So this is just a list of some of our ongoing training um, once you uh, are hired as a transitional employee. And some of it um, is gonna be job specific. If you're working in a kitchen, we might offer kitchen safety or customer service, um, more computer work, financial literacy. Um, depending on the industry that you're placed in, there might be additional training. Uh, if we're doing it within St. Anthony's, there'll be training, but if we place you outside, there might be other training that you're uh, um, able to access. And then doing a deeper dive on the pre-employment training that I mentioned earlier around managing conflict or working in a team and um, what does it mean to work in a diverse and, and equitable and inclusive environment and how to support, uh, and support that environment. So those are some highlights of the transitional employment program. And uh, we'll answer some questions that you might have later on in the presentation. Um, right now, I'm gonna hand this off to Joe and he's gonna share some additional information and, and then we'll take some questions. Joe? Thanks, Melissa, appreciate that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy July 5th. Um, so let's just go through this a little bit together. And I, if you have a question that occurs to you, please feel free to type it in the, the chat box and I'll try to address those as they come up. And as Melissa said, We've got plenty of time at the end of the presentation to ask more general questions. Um, so what are the top qualities that employees are looking for when they hire? Some of these might seem obvious to you. Some of these might just be a refresher. Some of these might be new to you. Obviously, show up on time, right? Take appropriate breaks. Um, we put that number one because it is surprising how many times people forget this. Number two, perform with accuracy and efficiency. Again, that might seem obvious, but just listening to our hiring managers and listening to our employees, it's oftentimes amazing uh, what we assume is professional behavior. People just don't know. Uh, number three, comfortable asking questions. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry, that was me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, comfortable asking questions. So. You know, this this is an interesting one to me because I can tell you personally, uh, as a younger man working in kitchens a lot, I would oftentimes tell my manager, yes, I can do that uh, because I wanted to be able to do it. The manager would walk away, but I needed to ask questions. And now I had to go track them down. So it's okay to ask clarifying questions as long as you're concise, as long as they're professional. As long as they pertain to the task at hand, those are going to be encouraged. Ability to take initiative. We've all heard this idea, are you a self-starter? Uh, if you're completing one task and you know that there's another task that has to be started, go ahead and start it. Managers really, really love to see that happen. Have a positive attitude. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the second part of this, emotional regulation. But attitude is everything. Uh, I think we all know that, we forget it. Some nights you don't have a great night's sleep. Some nights you're still replaying uh, an, an argument with a family member or a loved one in your head. It's important to realize, hey, when you're at work, sometimes you have to put that aside and show up with a, a great attitude. Hence the term emotional regulation. You still can experience those thoughts and those feelings but you might have to regulate them at times. Have a professional appearance. Uh, you know, San Francisco is an amazingly diverse place. We are not telling anyone, don't be who you are. Everybody should feel free to express themselves. But obviously, there are some hygienic things that we have to be on the lookout for. Um, and we also, you know, we, we want to make sure that if you're going to be customer facing, you have a professional and pleasant demeanor. 
Uh, and then number seven, possess good communication skills. This is huge. And I will say that when we talk about communication, this isn't just talking, this is listening. Reflective listening, active listening, these are incredible skills to have. If you've ever been on the phone with a bad customer representative, then you understand how important good communication can be. Someone that allows you the time to ask your question, asks clarifying questions, identifies with your frustration, and then lets you know what they're doing to help take care of the situation. Those are incredible skills. Uh, and Melissa, I'll just ask you to click on the next slide. So part of what we're gonna talk about if you take our class is the difference between soft skills and hard skills. Now, I'm gonna start with hard skills because that's a little easier to explain. If you have to use a tool, a piece of equipment or computer software on your job to complete a skill, that's a hard skill, or I'm sorry, yeah, a hard skill. Uh, like, let's say I'm a janitor and I have to buff the floors at night, that buffing machine, using it, using it properly, that's a hard skill. Now, things like communication, the ability to write, the ability to problem solve, and basically just deal with people, that is a soft skill. And let me tell you something. These days, an employer will prioritize soft skills over hard skills. We can teach someone how to use a computer. We can teach someone how to use a piece of equipment. It is very hard to teach someone how to be a good communicator. Uh, and again, if you've ever been at a restaurant or an auto parts shop or retail shopping, and you have to deal with a person who is bad in those soft skills, you know how frustrating and difficult it can be as a customer, right? So we do spend some time really working on those skills. Um, Melissa, next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit more about emotional intelligence because to me, this is our secret sauce. This is something that we spend some time talking about. And as you can see here on the screen, right, we break it down um, as the ability to understand and manage your emotions and communicate effectively with others. And here's what we know from all of the data that's out there. Someone who is emotionally intelligent tends to be better at handling everyday stress, fosters meaningful and trusting relationships, and usually experiences more job satisfaction. Who doesn't want that, right? Those are amazing benefits. And here's the thing, if you practice emotional intelligence, you get to keep that when you clock out at the end of your shift. This isn't just good for work. This is good for your life. Next slide, please. Uh, and click it. There you go. So we're going to break down emotional intelligence into four different areas, right? And again, some of these might seem very obvious, but it's a nice refresher. Uh, so the first one is noticing and understanding emotions in oneself. Now that might seem extremely obvious, but I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'm running around, I'm very busy. Maybe I've forgotten to eat. Maybe I'm again, replaying an argument in my head. I have stress about returning emails. I'm thinking about something that's gonna happen later on in the week. I'm just not paying attention to my emotions and they sneak up on me or I have a hard time identifying at times what exactly I'm feeling. So noticing and understanding emotions is huge. Uh, click it again, please. And the other side of that is noticing and understanding emotions in others. That's empathy, right? So we want you to understand what's going on in yourself because if you can do that, chances are you've got a better chance at noticing and understanding emotions in others. And again, if you can do that, that is a huge soft skill. And please click again. And then the flip side to both of those is effectively regulating our emotions. And again, let's say I'm having a bad day or I'm tired or I'm frustrated. You know what? If I'm dealing with a customer or a client or a guest, I need to regulate that. Um, I don't need to share my frustration with them. 
I just need to be there and help them out as best I can. And then after I'm done with them, maybe I take a few moments just to step outside, get some fresh air, reframe my day and regulate those emotions. And then here is also a really cool idea. You can use your emotions to facilitate performance. Maybe I'm really excited about a specific thing that's happening in my day, but you know what? I can use that excitement to facilitate what I have to get done in other parts of my day. Uh, and go ahead and click, Melissa. Click again. So when we talk about these things in transitional employment, these are some of the vital soft skills that we're talking about. Communication, active listening, empathy, self-regulation, reading the room, asking clarifying questions, engaging with your personal values, finding meaning in each task and integrity. And I just want to talk very, very briefly about this idea of engaging with your personal values. Something that we have found uh, that's supported by a lot of psychological data is if you can bring your values to a job, you're gonna get more out of that job. And I can also tell you just from personal experience and working with the clients that we've worked with, people that are using values on their job, they get noticed um, and they tend to get promotions a little bit faster. They tend to get raises a little bit faster. And again, when they clock out at the end of the day, they get to keep that sense of well-being. That's what we mean by finding meaning in each task. Listen, you're not going to love everything that you do on a job. That is just part of life. We understand that. But if you can find the reason for that, the meaning in doing that specific task, knowing that it's not going to be your entire day, you're going to get it done in a really good fashion. And again, integrity. Uh, my favorite definition of integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. Believe me, at work, they're going to notice that. They're going to notice that, wow, this person gets these tasks done. They show up with a good attitude. They know how to communicate. And next slide, please. So what makes a, a work environment good and productive? Um, does anybody out there right now that's uh, that's viewing our presentation, you can put this in the chat box. Do you have any examples of a good or productive work environment? And while you're thinking about that, you can also answer me, what factors can make a work environment uncomfortable or unsatisfying? And why do you think EQ, which is emotional intelligence, is important at work? And how does EQ, emotional intelligence benefit a team. And if you don't have anything to, to ask, that is okay. Um, we can always back up and remember we've got time at the end to take some questions and we're, we're doing great on time. So I'm just gonna give a few more seconds and then, aha, respect the workplace. Thank you, Lori, absolutely. Respect the, the workplace, I think uh, that speaks to integrity. It, it also speaks to bringing your values to work. I wanna be respected, so I'm gonna respect my team members and where I work. Um, a sense of belonging, thank you, Melissa, yeah. You know, a sense of belonging is, is huge. We tend to maybe think of that as something you feel around family, something you feel around people that are in the same artistic community. But I gotta tell you, uh, I have a sense of belonging when I go to my job every day. Um, helpful people willing to help get the work done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So let's move on to the next section then. And I appreciate those questions in the chat there. So uh, two really, really important ideas here on this, this slide. Uh, fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And I cannot tell you how many times I have seen this play out uh, in jobs. And to be honest with you, uh, as a younger man, I could see myself in a fixed mindset. And today I try to use a growth mindset. So what do those really mean? A fixed mindset is someone who just isn't interested in receiving new information 
thinks that what they do is good enough. Um, they tend to give up kind of easy and they take feedback and criticism very personally. Growth mindset, however, you learn from feedback. Failures can be an opportunity to learn. Um, you can be inspired by other people's success. Um, so I would ask yourself, you know, are you going into a new job or even just creating that new resume with a growth mindset? Can you adapt to different conditions? Are you skeptical or are you curious when you encounter new situations or information? Something is always going to happen. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, you know, we we had some issues to this morning just getting our, our slides up due to some computer issues. But, you know, everybody employed a growth mindset. We figured out how to get it done. We asked the right questions. We regulated our emotions, and you know what? It all came together because we have a good workplace. We trust each other, and we know that everyone is using a growth mindset. Now, in the past, a problem might have come up, and I might have just gone, well, that's it. It's not going to work. We're done. That's a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset is not a great mindset to have on the job or in life, frankly. Um, and next slide, please. So I really, really love this idea too, because this comes directly from the idea of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Do you react or do you respond? What are the differences? It, it can be subtle, but the more you learn about it, the more you realize how important it is. A reaction happens without thought. A response is a conscious action. So I can break that down even further. A lot of times a reaction can be defensive or combative, and sometimes it's perceived as too aggressive. It fuels disagreement, and it undermines you and or others, right? Uh, and I would say that a reaction oftentimes is characterized as being emotional. You know, we flash to anger, we flash to judgment, we flash to frustration. Whereas a response is a pause before speaking. It's a message that is well thought out, it's articulated and it's calm. It helps resolve an issue and it empowers you and empowers your team members. Next slide, please. Another way to think of this is, are you a thermostat or a thermometer, right? A thermostat you can set. A thermostat you can set, it's not gonna go over a certain temperature, right? Where a thermometer is just gonna let you know what the temperature is. There's no way of stopping it. Uh, and I would say people that are employing a growth mindset are a thermostat. They can regulate their emotions. They know when to pause, take a breath, and then respond with an appropriate and professional comment. Next slide, please. How do you do that? That's always the big question. Like, well, I, you know, I don't want to react. I do want to respond. Is there a tip that you can give us for that? Yeah, I'll give you a very, very simple technique right now. And it's called the stop technique. Stop spelled with two Ps. Uh, stop, take a breath, observe, plan, proceed. Next slide, please. And here we can break it down even more, right? So stop, just pause for a moment. And when I say a moment, look, it can be two seconds, five seconds. It can just be that, just to take a breath, observe, or I'm sorry, <laughs> I got to remember how to spell stop. Take a breath, right? Notice your breathing. This is, this is a very, very quick, almost meditative experience where you're just checking in with yourself. Just notice that breath in and out for just a moment. And then observe what thoughts are going through your mind. Where is your focus of attention? What are you reacting to? And what sensations do you notice in your body? I want to talk very briefly about that. Uh, I learned a few years ago that when I get very angry, maybe some of you can identify with this, the tips of my fingers start to tingle and vibrate. I've heard other people say similar things. Some people will say that when they get angry, they can feel their face flush. Some people have a, a, a cold or numb sensation in their chest. Whatever it is for you, learning that that is a physical sensation that happens 
before anger, before frustration can be very important. Because I know that when I start to feel that sensation in my fingers, I need to stop, I need to take a breath. And if I can, I need to excuse myself for a moment, compose myself in a professional way, and then come back in. And then finally, pull back. Put in some perspective. What is the big picture? What advice would I give a friend if a friend was going through this? Is this thought a fact or an opinion? Again, let me talk a little bit about that because I think this is a really interesting concept. We forget sometimes. A lot of times when I am responding to an emotion, I'm responding to an opinion. What I want to do is I want to respond to a fact and I want to stick to the facts. So maybe somebody is saying something in a certain tone of voice, or I think they're looking at me in a certain way, but honestly, I don't really know. I need to respond with facts. And then finally, this last one I think is vitally important. Practice what works. Hey, figure out what works for you, all right? What is the best thing to do right now? What can I do that fits with my values? Do what will be effective and appropriate. A lot of jobs have specific policies on how to handle specific situations. And again, if you bring your values to your job, you're probably going to succeed at handling these different, these difficult situations a lot more effectively than coworkers who are not practicing these ideas. Next slide, please. So hopefully you got a little bit of an idea of what we do in transitional employment and hopefully my portion gave you some of the teaching curriculum or the curriculum that we'll be teaching um and i want to just provide you with next steps if you do want to sign up we can leave this this uh screen up for now um basically just go to stanthonysf.org you can click on services and then transitional employment and fill out that interest form and we'll get back to you soon, okay? You can also call the hotline, 415-592-2869, or you can email us, TE, that's capital TE, at stanthonysf.org. And I see that it is also showing up in the chat screen, but what we'd like to do now, because uh, we have plenty of time, is to Open this up to questions. I believe Lori is going to unmute you and uh, we'll see you pop up on the screen. You can address the questions to Melissa or myself or just a general question, but we are happy to answer our, your questions. You can also type questions in the chat box if that is more comfortable for you. We're happy to take questions that way. So maybe what I'll do while people are thinking about their questions is just add a teeny bit more information. Sure. Um, so some of you might work at other nonprofit organizations in San Francisco. And if you uh, are interested in referring uh, one of your clients uh, to this program, feel free to do that. We, we really welcome that. Um, ideally, the folks that we're looking to uh, engage with in this program are folks that are re-entering the workforce after perhaps uh, they had some kind of justice involvement and now they've served their time and they wanna get back into the workforce. Um, or maybe they're um, a, a, a single household mother of, of children who are now in school and they're ready to go back to work and they just need to kind of um, find a way to get back into the workforce that way, might need a little bit of uh, training. Um, we also um, uh, have lots of folks that take uh, advantage of our services at St. Anthony's, um, come into the dining room, and are ready to look for work. And we welcome any of our guests uh, on the block or in the community that want to um, engage on, on uh, you know, finding out what those opportunities are in the community and at St. Anthony's and just need a little support. Um, once we get an interest form, we can decide whether 
uh, which what what the next steps are for that individual. But we welcome everybody. We do um, have some eligibility requirements around uh, folks being clean and sober. Um, we also need folks to be documented because we would eventually be hiring um, some of these individuals. Um, and we also um, need folks to be 18 or older. Um, that's really it. Other than that, we welcome anyone to apply for, for these opportunities. Yeah, th thank you, Melissa. Um, and I can see that we yep. did get some chats show up. Uh, we're, we're just gonna go through these and answer them in the order they came in. So uh, Manuel, you're asking, is there any job boards where we can search for jobs? Yeah, absolutely. You are welcome to go to the St. Anthony website. You can click on careers. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can click on the job openings and you are free to apply to any of those jobs at any time. Um, you know, you might not need this class. That's excellent. You also might only want a week of this class. That is something we're willing to work with too. I, I hope that answers your question. If not, Manuel, you know, type in the, the chat box or you can send us a message. And then go ahead, Melissa. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to mention that on the job board are all the jobs at St. Anthony's. And so um, if you see a job title and it has a, a capital T-E next to it, that's a transitional job. Correct. And those are the jobs that we're talking about, but some folks, like Joe said, might not need that um, easy transition. They might be ready to apply for one of our, what we call our core positions, which are our full-time long-term positions, um, in which case you can apply for those as well. Um, but if you're looking for a transitional job, you'll want to look for a job title that has the letters T-E in it. Correct. And Latha, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I got your, your message. And yeah, unfortunately, we cannot hire undocumented people at this time. Um, you know, I will say that if uh, someone is suffering from addiction, St. Anthony's does have the, um, the men's rehab right now, um, Father Alfred's, and they will take anyone, no questions asked. Uh, I know that might not answer the question for you, but unfortunately at this time, we can only take people who are documented. Um, and then, yeah, we have no problem, Latha, uh, reaching out via the chat, you know, please keep them coming. Manuel, got your message. You are welcome. I hope that answered the question. I see that Lori posted the St. Anthony's job boards. Um, and then, not sure I understand the comment, Latha. Uh, so maybe I can clear this up. So you have to be legal, documented worker to apply for a job at St. Anthony's. Um, if you are an immigrant, but you are perfectly okay to work here, that is perfectly okay. Um, you know, we, we are a very, very diverse and, and friendly group here. Um, but yeah, the one stipulation is you just have to have documentation. I hope that answered the question. Um, and let's see. I think those are all the questions that came through uh, on the chat. And if you've got any other questions, give you guys a few moments to think about them. We're happy to answer them. And you can also get a hold of us. Again, that last slide is still there. Uh, so please fill out that interest form if you are at all curious about our transitional employment program. You can email us again at TE at stanthonysf.org. We also have got that phone number highlighted there. And also on the form, if you do go to the form, there's a place where it asks, how did you hear about transitional employment? And there's, I don't believe the library is one of the choices, but there is an other category. So click that and put in the library so that we know that you were referred uh, through this presentation. Um, or through a conversation you had with somebody at the Business and Technology Center at the library. 
because that would be really helpful information for us to share. Well, Lori, I think we're um, we're done with our presentation. Um, does it make sense to wait another minute or two for other questions, or should we wrap up? Uh, we we can uh, wrap up. Thank you, thank you so much, Melissa and Joe. Um, about that question for um, undocumented immigrant, uh, you can email us. I, I remember that a patron asked that question recently, and I'm actually <laughs> trying to look for the the answer. But if if the person who asked that question don't mind, email us. I'll put my our email address again in the chat, so you can email that question, and then I will look for the answer for you. Okay, so. Bus uh, scit ech at sfpl .org. Um, But thank you so much, Melissa and Joe. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us about St. Anthony's transitional employment program, as well as the qualities and job skills that employers are looking for. I also want to thank everyone for joining the program. I hope you find the presentation informative and helpful to you. I will send out an evaluation survey uh, together uh, with the link to the recording. Um, uh, and uh, Joe and Melissa's uh, slide deck. Uh, please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve our program. Again, thank you, everyone.